Here we are in the anchorage at Sestri Levante. It's a beautiful place. As you can see, it's a little bit busy. It kind of looks like we're on a mooring ball here, but we're not. All these boats in the foreground here are all anchored. So we're kind of tempted to stay on board to make sure we don't have any troubles with that. But at the same time, we're hungry. So let's go ashore. What are we doing for food then? Tonight. Trying to find, well, I guess we're not gonna have prop troubles, fine, focaccia with the cheese. cheese. Sounds good to me. Um, and then maybe cheeky ice cream afterwards. Not maybe, maybe an ice cream for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Sestri Levante is one of the lesser known towns of the Italian Riviera. So although there are lots of tourists here, most of them are Italians rather than foreigners. One of the really nice things about Italian culture is how involved children are in everybody's activities. They're welcome everywhere and wherever you go, even late at night, you'll see children out with their parents. While we're eating our focaccia, I'll give you some details about Sestri Levante. Originally, the town began as an island, with a promontory and a sliver of sea separating the two. Over the years, the deposits from the river accumulated to form a sandbank. This was then built upon and consolidated, and as a result of this, the town now has two beaches facing in opposite directions right next to each other. There is history in the town from Roman times, and then many centuries down the line, there was a lot of action on this entire coastline with Barbary pirates who would come ashore, raid, loot, steal, and take people away with them so that they could be sold as slaves. So there are lots of stories that will have taken place in this town over the years. The sights, sounds, and smells in the town are all lovely, and it's a really nice, relaxing place to visit. We still had a little bit of hunger left on us, so it was time to get a gelato. Are you tired, Chris? I'm definitely ready for bed. Good morning. Remember the wildfire that we saw yesterday over there? Well, it, evidently it didn't go out. The Canadair CL415 is an amphibious aircraft used to fight fires in many countries around the world. It can scoop over 6,000 litres, which is over 1,600 gallons, of water on a 12 second run on a fresh or salt water source close to the fire. This is then dropped on the fire before another load of water is collected. The pilots of these aircraft have to deal with many unique hazards such as other water users, power lines obscured by smoke and challenging terrain. This makes their job as dangerous as it is exciting. In fact, 10 of the 95 CL415s which have been built have crashed, sometimes resulting in a loss of life. These people do an amazing job and I would like to take this opportunity to thank them for their service. Some canoeists over there, one of them's capsized his canoe and it's completely flooded so his mates are towing him back to shore. 
I can sympathise with this guy. That happened to me once as well in the River Loon near Lancaster. It was January, we were canoeing, and oh my God, it was so cold. I was the far side of the river, I capsized. The boat filled with water. I had to drag it across the uh, other side of the river. And a certain part of my anatomy What are we doing, darling? We are leaving Sestri Levante and we are going to Buonasola or Levanto. We still have to decide. Let's go! Here we are at Bonasola. We were considering anchoring here, but now that we've got here, we think Levanto is a better option. So we're just going to continue. It's only around the corner, it's not too far away. So we're going to continue to Levanto and then we will anchor there. Here we are then, anchored at Levanto. The, um, the bay is quite open, it's exposed to the sea from this direction and uh, the wave, waves are coming in from that direction to the sea. So if we were bow into the waves, which sometimes we are, it's relatively comfortable. The boat moves up and down, back and forward and it's quite, quite fine. But when the wind comes beam on, then we get blown around obviously to line up with the wind and then we're beam onto the waves and it's very, very rolly, it's going to be very uncomfortable. So I'm going to set a second anchor, stern anchor. I'm going to put the tender together and then just head out over roughly behind where that little boat is, drop the second anchor and then we can use that to control the tension on that, we'll control the direction that our boat points into and then we can stay uh, bow into the waves. Okay, I'll uh, come up on board and then adjust this to get the right position.
what Sellers just said. I was just thinking, it's a dream, we're not moving. So I guess that's a thumbs up from Rob. As I sit here looking out to sea, I'd like to reflect upon a dream that I had a number of years ago. At the time I was working on a ship in the North Sea, and I distinctly remember standing on the back deck, looking out to the horizon as the sun set, and I had a deep feeling of appreciation for the beauty of the sea. However, even though I enjoyed my job, and I was working with good people, there was a part of me which felt as though I was on a floating prison. I had no influence over where we were or where we would go next, and my destiny was being determined completely and utterly by the captain and the other hierarchy of people on board that vessel. I imagined and dreamt about what it would be like to be out at sea looking at the same view on my own vessel and being in charge of my own destiny. And at that point in time, buying a boat became a defined goal of mine in life. Fast forward a few years, here we are, just as I imagined. We have our own boat, we're looking out at the horizon, we're the ones in control of our destiny, and this dream really has come true. Not only that, but this 30 foot boat that this video was filmed on, the first time we saw it, there is a little cubby hole underneath the V-berth in the forward cabin, and both Rossella and I imagined having three pairs of shoes in there. One for me, one for Rosella, and one for our future child. We both had this vision together, and the universe conspired to make this dream of ours come true too. Before we sold this boat, we were fortunate enough to be blessed with Emma, who was born not long after this video was filmed, and we did get to see those three pairs of shoes in that cubby hole under the V-berth. The reason I'm sharing this with you is because, in my experience, you shouldn't limit your dreams. When I was at school, if somebody would have told me that in the future I'd have had a sailing boat and I'd be sailing around in the Mediterranean and sailing across the English Channel solo, I would have never have believed them. It would have seemed like pure fantasy. But here we are, we're, we're living that dream. Dreams become the goals, goals become plans, and plans create your future. So whatever you dream about in your life, don't limit your dreams. Don't ever think that that's unachievable. Turn your dreams into goals, your goals into plans. And a few years from now, you may be amazed at how your life looks. Enjoy drinks. Yeah.